darlings, welcome to a new vlog. Can you even see me? I look like a little floating head because I'm camouflaged into the background. I'm in an excellent mood today because we've got a blue sky day and it's Sunday and we're gonna have a roast chicken later and we're gonna spend pretty much the whole day in the garden. This is my perfect day. This is, this is just, this is perfection to me. I'm dressed like a teenage mutant ninja turtle meets Lara Croft does gardening. <laughs> That's the vibe for the outfit today. I've done my Lara Croft Tomb Raider hairstyle because honestly I feel like it just looks like I've made a bit more effort than sticking it in a bun which would have been option number one today had I not been filming it would be in a bun. Um, but I feel a bit, I feel a bit more cool with my hair in a little plait and I even take a strand of hair and I wrap it around the bobble. That was something that I used to do in my school days. So I'm fully thermaled up. Let me see if I can show you. This is the most practical but least stylish outfit in the world. Actually, I don't even think it's not stylish. It's just very practical. My trousers are from a company called Asai Outerwear. They fit really nicely. They're basically like the structure of jeans. I know they look like leggings, but they are the structure of jeans. Um, they're waterproof. Ooh, what have I just trod on? Ugh. Wood chippings. That looks like a giant dried spider leg. I wouldn't put it past this house, honestly. It might be like a fossilised spider. Um, yes, they are waterproof and they are thermal because it's minus two and I'm going to spend the day in the garden. Um, but they're great. They're like a dark emerald green colour. Love. Why are there so many ladybirds in here? Should I let them out or are they in here because it's too cold outside? Hmm. Sorry, I got distracted by ladybugs. There's like 17 on this windowsill. Um, and then this is actually a very old Sweaty Betty ski base layer. It is thermal and it's got the funky gloves and it's brushed on the inside, just like my trousers. Yes, and then I've got one of the ultra Uniqlo um, heat tech thermals on, you know, the really thick ones. And I'm going to do a gilet and my barber. But before we get started on gardening, Charlie has just made avocado toast. So... This day is starting in the most perfect way. Let's get gardening and eating. Delicious avo toast has been had. Now I'm going to do one of my lovely smoothie jars as my breakfast dessert, yum yum. If you take anything away from my videos, honestly, smoothie frozen jars and also veggie stock have got to be my two top recommendations. Shout out to whoever it was that let me know that you leave your veggie stock in the simmering oven in your aga instead of on the top. It just makes so much more sense and I don't know why I didn't do it earlier. Um, so that has got my lovely veggie and beef bone simmering away and I'm going to be using that as part of a delicious recipe for my Sunday roast later. But for now, let's make the smoothie and then get out into the garden. Are you going to come and help mummy in the garden or are you going to sit here and look beautiful in the sunshine? Are you a supermodel? Are you a supermodel? Oh, you look like a little Easter chick with your fluffy head. You're just a divine creature who I adore more than anything in this world. Oh, you licking your lips, you sweetheart. Oh, it's been a tough morning. Should we go in the garden? Come and help, mummy. Come on then. Come on, my lazy little sluggy. No, we'll stay here, mummy. It's much more comfortable. Okie dokie, it is time to get into the garden. Yay, I've got a million layers on. I've got my really thick Colin Cooper gilet, my barber, all the layers I showed you earlier. Um, clutching a kitchen roll tube because <laughs> I'm gonna cut these in half and um, <clears throat> sow some sweet peas today. We're getting towards the end of sweet pea sowing season. Even if you don't have a garden, if you've got space for a pot, then I would recommend growing the sweet peas and you don't even need any um, root trainers or anything you can literally grow them in loo roll or kitchen roll tubes so I'll quickly tell you some of the jobs that we're doing today we are cutting down our raspberries down to the ground because they do not grow on last year's 
growth so you have to cut them down and let them grow back again which they will quite happily we've got a few new raspberries and berry bushes to plant and listen to the bird song it's so gorgeous um i need to as i mentioned sow my sweet peas 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 I'm going to be adding some ash from our fires around the edge of anything which gets a bit slug prone. So lupins and maybe some of the alliums, I'll just look out for some slug damage. Add some ash from the fire which not only feeds the soil but slugs don't like it so it protects your plants. I need to do some chop and dropping on my veg beds ready for Tuesday's compost delivery and then it's all go when the compost is here on the beds. and. I'm sure Charlie's got like a million other jobs, so let's get cracking. So these two here are healthy looking lupins, but this one here is a slug attacked lupin. You can see someone's had a real nibble. Um, so, round, yeah, well, they say that fire ash, so I'm just going to add some ash around them. And I'm hopefully running. that'll protect them. In case you didn't watch to the end of my last vlog, Lola and I were in here for um, an afternoon of potting up some beautiful bulbs. This is just such a nice way. Again, you don't even need to have a garden to do this and um, it's far more affordable to do it yourself than buy them in a garden centre. Just to give you an idea, in Dalesford something like this is about £15, whereas I actually only paid £2.50 for the bulbs, foraged the moss and you can get ten a penny <laughs> not quite but you can get antique um pots really affordably in antique places so always keep your eye open for them but we also filmed a youtube short so i don't know if i can link them to this video so that you can like, click on it but have a little look on my page if you'd like a little a tutorial it's very very easy and they would make for gorgeous mother's day gifts this is where I will be potting, or planting rather, no, sowing, <laughs> sowing my sweet peas later. I saved this heart-shaped Jo Malone box and um, I just need like five more loo roll tubes and then I'll have enough to start sowing. My sweet peas are soaking so I should be able to get cracking with those later. And my beautiful pot of daffodil bulbs these are just the very very last blooms these narcissus they smell like absolute heaven um when these are finished flowering i will plant these bulbs in the garden and i'll use this to do another mossy creation it's also just really nice to add more greenery into the greenhouse at this time of year with all these lovely ones and then i've got some leftover moss here right i need a kneeling pad and my secateurs to get started on these raspberries. So this is raised bed number one. It needs a lot of attention, needs a lot of compost adding, but as I said, it's arriving on Tuesday, hopefully. So today I'm gonna pick up, um, pull up anything like this, an old spinach, old kale, old lettuce leaves, and chop and drop like I did on that bed. It's still looking very scraggly because I was hoping my compost was going to arrive earlier, but never mind. And as you can see, very annoyingly, okay, if I had my way, I would not have raspberries in this bed. I would create like a raspberry bush island over there, but Charlie wants raspberries in the bed and we have to compromise. So I'm allowing him a strip. So what you have to do is chop them, as I mentioned, down to the ground and they will spring back to life. And we're adding some new varieties in here. Loganberry, all gold raspberry and cascade delight but as you can see from the bed well you might be able to see i will show you this is little raspberry sproutlings now as i mentioned i do not want this to be a raspberry bed so i'm actually going to have to pull up all of these little sproutings to limit the raspberries just to this one patch here because i need the growing space in this bed so i'm going to pull them all up um, chop them up, add them back into the ground, and then hopefully we'll be able to keep on top of it over summer. Okay, here we are in situ, ready to get started. And I've completely forgotten that there's actually loads of carrots in this bed as well. So I'll tilt you down. Um, looks like we'll be doing a lot of carrot recipes over the next couple of weeks. Can have some with our roast later. I actually probably need this to get them out. I think it's called a hori hori and it's quite useful for just loosening the ground around root veg. Whoa. There 
we go. Nice, chunky, fat carrot. And if there's any that don't look good enough to eat properly, then I'll chop them up and put them in my next veggie broth. exhausting pulling up all those carrots it's literally an arm workout this one that's so deeply gnarled into the ground I'm actually gonna have to ask Charlie to help me I'm taking my coffee out in my thermal um, travel mug this is a new launch from Ocean Bottle our favorites you'll be very familiar with Ocean Bottle because I have one glued to my side all the time whether that's during a gym workout or day in London in my handbag, in the car, car journeys. Um, so they now do these travel mugs and this is great when I'm out in the garden because I'm a very slow coffee drinker and obviously my coffee just gets cold and we don't want to waste any. Um, so this is gonna keep it warm for longer. And also it's got this little lid, um, great for travel obviously. Um, and that means that I won't get soil and remnants that I'm flinging around in the garden in my coffee. You can actually just flick it shut if you want to or slide it slide it open. Very, very handy. The purchase of these supports or funds the collection of over a thousand ocean bound plastic bottles and it's made from over 60% recycled post-consumer um, plastic. So very environmentally friendly and just to be honest a great hack if you're a gardener just take your coffee out in a travel mug with a lid to keep your coffee free from little bugs little bits of soil and keep it hot for longer so there we go right back to it Here's the variety that you can get from one single pack of carrots. This looks like something from a doll's house. It looks like a toy carrot. It's the weeniest, most adorable little thing I've ever seen. And in the exact same patch of soil, from the exact same seed packet, we have these absolute monsters. They are, quite frankly, the rudest and most gargantuan carrots I have ever seen. Wowza. And then this one, darling, I need your help because it's a triple pronger and it's well and truly requires an archaeological dig to get it out. Interesting. Yeah, Tony Robinson in. Tony Robinson, who's that? Is he a, a digger? Yeah, he's like the Monty Don of archaeology. Really? <clears throat> yeah, he's on the time team. <laughs> I think he's still around, Tony Robinson. Oh, right. Okay, well. Do you reckon next? He was a good friend of mine, actually. A good friend of yours, oh, yes. Such a good I like digging too, except I normally dig in very inconvenient places. Look at my snood, it's so glossy. He just loves it. Yeah. All right. All right. Get pulling, mate. a bit out of breath from some intense chopping and dropping and what are you doing over in this bed one? We 
we are planting a few more raspberries. Although actually, this is Loganberry, which yeah. we, I think we've already got. I don't know if we have this exact variety. What's a bit annoying mm. is we planted three lots of raspberries last year. They did really well, but we didn't really write down what the variety was. Oh no. So we're going to have to figure it out this year. So yeah. At least we can make a note of these three. Yeah. And I think we've said this before, but I think the, jer the journey we've been on, this is two years now that we've had this space. Yeah. It's February 2022 that we started having this put in. So it's two years, under two years since it's finished. Is it? Are you sure? Are you sure it's not another year? No. So it's February. So we had 2022. So we we moved in 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 April 20. 2020, yeah. and it took us two years to get other bits of the garden done, and this was done in end of Feb, beginning of March 2022. Uh, Two. So this is really our third growing season. It's our third growing season, but only our second proper growing season. Yeah. Um, because we kind of had it finished. If, correct me if I'm wrong. I think it finished. This got finished in like beginning of. May, May, mid to May, yeah, which is kind of we'd missed a lot of stuff. I was desperate to get stuff into so, it. So, anyway, long, long, long story short, our big thing this year, and we're learning every year, and we're still amateurs really when it comes to, to particularly the kitchen garden, um, is to grow things that we can't buy as much as anything else. So, mm. like, you, you know, like your golden courgettes, um, Stuff that you literally... Chiogia, beetroot. You know, it would be awesome one day to be able to grow those purple um, sweet potatoes. But anyway, yeah, good with day. the raspberries, one thing that's awesome is just being able to grow a, a real variety. Because when you go to the supermarket, or even farm shops, the only raspberries really tend to be your pinkish red colour. Yeah. Loganberries are, we had, and I they say summer harvest, but I remember we were picking these in October. Uh, yeah. Um, and they're really nice. They're much longer. Look, they're almost like more of a red blackberry. Yeah, um, but not the density of a blackberry. Yeah, so then we're planting those. We've already got a yellowy, orangey type of raspberry here. I don't believe it's this one. So this is another yellowy one, which is called All Gold. <clears throat> and the key is you have summer and autumn fruiting raspberries. Mm. So that's where we massively caught up. So if anyone is thinking of planting raspberries, try and get a mixture of summer and autumn and make a note of where they are. Yeah. Because we've had to blag it a bit with pruning these. In all honesty, we're very new to this, uh, to raspberries, and we should have, in September, October last year, cut the summer raspberries down to the ground. It's too late for that now, obviously. Mm. I don't know. I have a suspicion that this, the, the, the more yellow, these are the summer ones, and I think these are autumn fruiting. This, this one, sorry. Right. And I think that means we only have one autumn fruiting at the moment, but I could be wrong. Anyway. It's a tough gig. The other one we're planting <laughs> is our first raspberry that's actually a bit more like your classic supermarket one cool which we actually don't have traditional so we're gonna end up having seven varieties and they, they, they do you know what they're they're enough for the two of us for our yogurt or whatever in the morning breakfast but you don't get obviously like a crazy amount no but you really save them i think they taste so much dickens better. ate 50 percent of them last year dickens loves the strawberries particularly. <laughs> but what's interesting is obviously we do have birds and <laughs> he's so and funny no issue with wildlife getting involved because it's part of the fun of it. But weirdly, it's the strawberries that the birds go for. Mm. They don't figure out the raspberries. Too many prickles. Yeah, but also, yeah. another exciting update. Oh! Look at that. Look at that. The first bit of spring blossom on our plum tree. Is it a plum tree? Yeah, this is a plum tree. Yay! Yeah. I notice the ornamental pears on our driveway are starting to blossom yeah. as well. It's always that nervous time of year though, where they call it obviously full spring, where like a day like today is telling the plants to come out and do their thing. But then potentially we might have a week or two of like minus. Snow. Yeah, it snowed so, after Easter last year. So let's hope that, that we just have warm weather now. Yeah. Otherwise you, the blossom gets sort of killed off a bit. It does. But it's it exciting, snowed it? onto the blossom last year. This is my trug of um, carotten, which is crazy. I'm gonna give them all a really good scrub shortly and I've been doing the mucky job of the chop and drop. So chopping up all of the leaves and some of the carrot root because it's just too good to waste. And it's basically the lazy person's way of composting because then next week when I get the compost and layer it on top, the little worms will eat all of this greenery. So I'm just lightly raking it to spread it over the surface of the beds. Um, and then I think my next job, I'm gonna have a quick attack of the herb bed because we can chop down any of the brown bits now to encourage the new growth. And then we're doing well. Very productive Sunday in the garden.
job for today. I've got this ash from the fireplace and I'm gonna be sprinkling this around my slug attacked lupins and my non-slug attacked lupins because we don't want the same fate to happen to my healthy ones. Now, I imagine I'll probably have to do this maybe once a week. Um, Dexy, you really do need to keep your snout away from here because I guess once it's rained in, it's not gonna have quite the same effect, but we shall see. Hopefully this will do the trick. I'm sure Charlie will be horrified at how this looks, but to be honest, it'll be worth it. And it's only, you only need to do it while the plant's quite small because obviously slugs can't climb very well. So once it gets taller, it won't be a problem. But for now, we'll deal with these light gray rings around my lovely lupins. They are definitely worth protecting. Okay, my darlings, the church has just struck three o'clock. So we've been in the garden for about four hours. It actually feels like longer, um, but I'm gonna do my final job for the day now, which is, hallelujah, my heart-shaped box is now full of loo roll tubes and a couple of cut in half kitchen roll tubes. I've had my Chilton seeds, I think these are called sweet Kathy, or just Kathy. Um, Kathy sweet peas, I'll pop a photo of what they're going to look like on the screen here. They've been soaking in this little pot, jar, tray, dish overnight. So I'm going to sow the sweet peas in here. I don't have enough to fill all of these tubes, so I'm also going to do some of my peas and a different variety of pea. I absolutely love growing peas. Sweet peas are not edible, but they are the most beautiful cut and come again flower. They are so fragrant and I just absolutely love them. They're probably one of my top three cut flowers alongside dahlias and I don't know. I don't know who I'm reserving that third spot for. And then I bought these little pots, which are the ones that the bulbs came in. And I'm going to actually, it feels so early to be doing this, but I'm going to prick out some of my kaolettes, which are getting very leggy in the windowsill and see if we can rescue them. But that is a secondary job. So first of all, I'm gonna fill the bottom of these with some of my slightly thicker compost, and then I'll do the top layer with something that's a little bit more fine. my kaolette which as you can see is exceptionally leggy now this is one of the fiddliest jobs that you'll ever need to do when you're gardening and what I like to do is start by making my little holes in the pot where it's going to go this is hopefully going to encourage them to grow into proper little plants and not these stringy little leggy items that we see here we'll start off with six now, it kind of goes against your natural intuition. You wanna grab it from the bottom, but actually they work better if you grab the seedling from the leaves at the top. Just very gently pull so that you get all of the root structure. See that root there against my dark green? And then you wanna put as much as possible, you can use something to help you, as much as possible, below the soil level. So I should actually have made these holes a little bit deeper. And hopefully this long straggly bit will actually develop roots, just tucking it in, tuck it into bed. Um, and hopefully it'll grow properly from here. So I'm gonna make these a bit deeper because I have honestly never seen anything as leggy as these kaolettes. So it's the root and the stem tucking down, do it as gently as possible. I didn't do that very gently. Tuck it down so that only the leaves are poking out above the soil. I'm gonna do three in each pot and hopefully at least one will survive. Good luck, my little friends. <laughs> I have water. 
watered my heart of sweet peas and while I'm over here I've got another little task so when this is what they'll look like when they start to grow when you have got your first proper set of leaves you can actually pinch out it seems counterintuitive but pinch out the top of your sweet peas and what this does is when they get bigger this encourages them to get uh, like more what's the word horizontal rather than tall so you actually get a lot more flowers only when you've got that second proper set of leaves this one just about does there we go I'll keep an eye on those. These were my microgreens. Um, they're having their second flush now, which is exciting. I'll be able to use those in salads soon. These would definitely germinate quicker if I took them in the house, but seeing as I've got my first batch well on their way, I think we can keep these in the greenhouse. Plus it's a little bit scruffy to have my recycled loo rolls in the house. And then I've got one of my potted on KLS labeled up in this corner and the rest of them are in this tray and they're going to go back in the house as well. That is my pile of carrots. I'm gonna pick out the best ones and chop them up ready for a veggie broth. And the big gnarly ones, they just won't taste very good so they are going to go in the compost. Well, how lovely, the sunshine has just come out again. I've given the greenhouse a quick tidy. Again, it's just nice to give everything a bit of a brush down after a busy afternoon of gardening. I feel like it's been a real job well done today. Everything's looking good, freshly watered and freshly potted in some cases. Really, really happy with these little moss bulb pots. And we've done so much work down in the kitchen garden, well and truly ready for that Sunday roast now. I'm going to leave the door open just for a couple of hours and then I'll shut it before we go to bed tonight. I have just been cleaning my carrots, how exciting is that? And yeah, I did throw away the larger ones, pop them in the compost, but the smaller ones will be perfect for our roast and for making my veggie stock with. It is actually so delightfully warm when the sun is shining. I cannot believe we had a frost this morning. There we go, the four o'clock bells. I'm going to have a quick change of outfit and then it's time to start preparing our roast. changed into a non covered in soil outfit and I'm now going to make something new to have as a side dish with our roast so we've got a massive roast chicken and Lilla is of course coming over Charlie is on roast potato and uh, I think honey mustard carrot duty and I'm going to do a I'm going to call it a spring veg gratin a little bit of a nod to a potato dauphinoise, but basically getting all of your greens in a dish baked in the yummiest way possible. So my spring greens, technically winter greens, but it's spring, so we'll call it a winter slash spring green gratin. I'm gonna use some Cavolo Nero because it's so green and luscious and good for you. Onion for flavor. This is the biggest onion I have ever seen in my life. We'll be adding that. I've got some kaolette. We had some of these left in the fridge from various recipes from the week. So if you're wondering what the kaolette is that I'm growing, spoiler alert, I did not grow this kaolette. It's essentially, imagine a Brussels sprout kind of opened up and it's a little bit nuttier and less sprouty <laughs> in its flavor. People that don't like sprouts often still like kaolette. Um, and you can see why it's called kaolette because it really does look like kale. I've got some regular kale and I'm also going to put some peas and some leeks in. So all of the best veggies. Now I'm loosely following the sauce from a deliciously Ella recipe. I think most if not all of her recipes are vegan. I'm not vegan. So um, I'm going to use regular milk and I'm going to use cheese whereas she use, uses oat milk and um, nutritional yeast. I've got a potato that I've just peeled. I'm keeping it in some water so it doesn't go brown. Um, and I'm gonna thinly slice that and add a layer of cheese on the top. So it should be scrumptious. In Deliciously Ella's gratin recipe, she also uses some cashews, which I think she uses to add creaminess to the sauce. So first of all, we need to soak these in some boiling water, then cook my slices of potato, and then 
we are well on our way. Monday morning now. I have started the day by straining out my chicken and veggie broth. The kitchen smells amazing. So literally just from the leftovers and veg cutting, not leftovers, you know, like this uncooked scraps of veggies and the chicken bone carcass, we have got two jars of the most delicious stock. It smells amazing and it's free and I will never get over it. This is something, you know when you start to do something and you know you're just going to do it for the rest of your life because it's such a good life hack and I can't believe I don't see more people talking about this because it's so clever. Sorry, I'm just really happy. <laughs> I'm really happy with my veggie broth discovery. It's the best thing to come out of 2024. We've woken up to another incredible blue sky frosty morning it just looks cold out there doesn't it but trust me it's beautiful i'll show you the view from our bedroom window again in a second and i'm actually heading to bamford but <clears throat> i couldn't get a place on a reformer this morning i think last week i was my mind was elsewhere and i just didn't book myself into the classes so i've not got a slot but i think i'm going to go for a lovely swim well if you ever want a personal shopping experience where you've got dalesford yourself might I recommend Monday mornings? This is something that I've been intrigued by, but I've never actually tried before. And I was listening to a podcast about infrared saunas. I don't even know if it's switched on or if it's working, but let's have a little look. Okay, this looks promising. 
Hmm. Well, <laughs> I'm sat in here um, and nothing is happening. I have a feeling maybe you have to ask a reception for it to get turned on. There don't seem to be any buttons anywhere. There's like a traditional coal thing in the bulb, heater, um, and then these what I presume are infrared panels behind me. But there's no on button. Unless I'm being really silly. <laughs> this isn't working. I'm gonna go back in the pool. Possibly zen for a Monday morning. That was absolute heaven. Absolute heaven. The treatments at Bamford, they really are exceptional. The technique that all the therapists use, it just instantly sends you into a trance. And the surroundings, the relaxation room with a view to the meadow, just gorgeous, absolutely gorgeous. So that was the grounding treatment using the new Bamford Woodland Moss collection. Financial barriers, education. Um, using new Bamford Woodland Moss Collection and it started off with dry body brushing which I absolutely love it makes your whole body tingle and then a massage using I believe it's like a homemade rosemary oil I'm gonna have to try making that and I just went into a into a state it was just absolute bliss and then when I was flipped over the most heavenly neck and shoulder massage um, and she was doing these kind of like stretches on my neck which were gorgeous and then finishing with a mist of the woodland moss eau de parfum which is very grounding and I just feel blissed out after my gorgeous swim lovely little dunk in the outside warm pool and it's a blue sky day Perfect, absolutely perfect. Um, I now have to go home and do a lot of work on my laptop, which is a shame. Maybe, maybe, do you know what? I might flip the day around. I might do a couple of hours of nice things. I want to make some energy balls. Um, and I actually want to make chocolate orange energy balls today. I've seen a recipe in um, my Carla Oates book that's inspired me. So maybe I'll do that before I open my laptop because once I open it, I get sucked in, and that'll be me for the rest of the day. So, yeah, I think I'll make the most of the gorgeous weather. So, let's head home and have some lunch. I've got some salads. I've got a quiche. Yay! It's a good day. <laughs> treat arrived home and Charlie declared that he wanted to make brunch so we had a really nice kind of egg it was an egg and kale and chili kind of mixture with oven fried broccoli and fried eggs on toast really really nice I will probably make a smoothie in a second as well as my little bit of sweetness um, so as I think I mentioned I'm gonna be making something from this cookbook which I have honestly had for years and I don't think I've ever really sat down and opened it up and properly looked at it which is shocking but they've got some really nice recipes in here and I'm going to make this one, which is the chocolate orange energy balls. Now, I do have an energy ball recipe that I've used a lot in the past, but this one, ooh, still got the plastic on this zip. Um, this just arrived from Holland Cooper, alongside some other really nice bits, so I'll show you a little try on when these are in the fridge. Uh, what was I saying? Yes, so energy balls, 
the main substance of them is dates and to start with I'm going to soak them so they're a little bit softer and I'm going to make them chocolate orange flavour using the zest of an unwaxed organic orange. So the other ingredients, I'm gonna pop in some oats. The recipe actually calls for buckwheat grouts, which I do not have. Some desiccated coconut, the one that I've got has got MCT oil in there as well, which I'm sure will be wonderful. A lovely cacao to give it that gorgeous chocolatey flavor. I have got the ancient and brave cacao and reishi. So this is a really wonderful one with all the benefits of reishi as well. Um, and then I'm also adding in, again, to get that creaminess, so they're, they're gonna be a lot smoother than my usual very nutty energy balls. Tahini, some almond butter, some dark chocolate cacao nibs, a few raisins or cranberries, and a pinch of cinnamon. So many yummy flavors. I think the chocolate and the orange together is gonna be absolutely scrumptious. Please excuse the noise of the coffee machine hissing in the background. And then I'm going to roll them in either blitzed up pistachio or hazelnut as a finishing touch, just so they have a little nutty outer layer. And I think they are gonna be absolutely scrumptious. So first of all, let's soak the dates just to soften them up and then we'll blend everything together. Okay, so next, now that my dates are soaking, I'm going to zest my orange. And now alongside the orange zest, I'm just gonna add all of the ingredients, including the dates and the water that they were soaking in, into my trusty blender. just did a little taste test and it's absolutely incredible. So now what I'm gonna do is just add in a few more of the cacao nibs, just so that we've got some lovely solid bits of chocolate in there. And then I will roll them into balls, dip them in my blended pistachio or hazelnut, and then pop them on the baking tray where they'll just be nice and safe all together. Pop them in the fridge, <laughs> Pop them in the fridge for about an hour so they solidify and then they will keep, I'll keep them in the fridge. They'll last, I mean they would last for probably a couple of weeks, but I guarantee these will all get eaten within a matter of days. As you probably saw, that was an incredibly messy process. Do not forget to take your rings off before doing that because they will get absolutely covered in chocolate. But here we go, my perfectly created little balls. I'm going to pop them in the fridge for just over an hour or so while I show you the new Holland Cooper pieces. And then they'll harden up and they'll be ready to enjoy. Okay, my darlings, energy balls are in the fridge. So I'm gonna share with you some new pieces which arrived today from Holland Cooper. This is brand new collection from them, um, literally launched as I'm filming this, I think three days ago. So really excited to share these pieces with you. And I have to say they are some of the most wearable pieces. I mean, to be honest, all of the Holland Cooper pieces. For me, living out here in the countryside, they are super duper wearable, but these pieces are just perfection. I always love how they manage to elevate the kinds of things that you just want to wear all day, every day. So you'll have already spotted this lovely, um, it's kind of like a fair isle in that it's got the, or not, not fair isle, sorry, like cable knit, cable kind of design, lovely gold zip detail. It's really quite sporty how the zip is one of these, not even half zip, like quarter zips, and you've got the iconic, ooh, 
I haven't put my rings back on, I feel quite nude. Um, it's got the iconic Holland Cooper button detailing. So I've got it in this lovely, it's kind of like a biscuity colour. And then the trousers, this is my second pair of these trousers. This is the green khaki colour and I've also got them in a chocolate. I would say if you are between sizes, to be honest they've got a lot of stretch to them, um, but I would be inclined to size up with these because they are quite a hoik, quite a pull <laughs> to get them on and they are very very fitted. I've styled them with my Holland Cooper black boots which I love, they're so practical and they just go with everything. I have seen a sneak peek on their Instagram that they're actually bringing these out in brown in autumn and I cannot wait for that but I love the black ones. Trousers fit absolutely gorgeously, love this dark green colour and I know that they're just going to be really really versatile. I'm not sure if all the colours here will go perfectly together but I did just think if I need an extra layer under my wax jacket or something then one of their gilets will work absolutely perfectly on top of this kind of knit. So this is one of my newer ones, it's in the mulberry colourway. I think in the green it could look really nice with this coloured trousers as well. You still get the lovely sleeve detail with the gilet um, and yeah sometimes you just need that extra layer of warmth. Even that looks really nice. My camera is kind of blowing out the colours a little bit but just seeing that zip detail. Yeah I think the top of this top like the half zip is a style that I really like and I love that it's ribbed here so you've got the cable knit design and then the ribbed. Really really lovely so yes gorgeous. Now this next piece I am really excited about. Far too excited given what it is. It's essentially a ginormous raincoat but it's kind of like a dry robe. So if you've ever been wild swimming you might have seen people wear these. They're like giant fluffy coats with almost like a sherpery towel lining and they're great because you can get changed underneath them after your wild swim or just use them as an amazing layer but they're also just fantastic for dog walks, for really blusterous gardening expeditions. If you enjoy outdoor pursuits <laughs> that endure you to the elements then this is going to be really really practical and I know it's kind of silly how excited I'm getting about a raincoat but look at this lining oh my goodness so we have got an ultra fluffy lining. I love that they think of all the little details. You've got the, the antique bronze little chain hook here because it's always going to need to be hung up. And then really, really thick kind of padding and then a waterproof layer on the outside. Color wise, these come in khaki and chocolate brown. I've gone for the chocolate brown. I cannot wait to try this on. Oh my gosh, it's crazy how much I love this. It is so snuggly with this super soft Sherpa lining. And this is softer than any kind of faux sheep that I've ever felt before. It is so ridiculously soft. The Sherpa does not continue down the sleeves, but they are padded. You've got the little button detail here. The fabric itself is waterproof, but it's almost it almost looks like corduroy. Like it's got a little bit of a grain to it. And if you want to make the sleeves a bit tighter to give a little bit more of a fitted shape than you can do. Personally, I quite like the look of them completely loose. We've got some really nice deep pockets here which are great for keeping your hands warm. There's a little internal pocket here in case you want to pop a mobile phone or car keys or something like that. As it's a raincoat, of course, we have got a hood. This is just going to be fantastic for those filthy, muddy, rainy dog walk days because I can just get completely snuggled in. If I need to get myself to the gym on a rainy day as well, this is going to be perfect. And really nice brown, I think it's leather. You've got this brown leather or leather look piping detail, which is just such a nice detail that we come to know and love from Holland Cooper. And even for example here, the little drawstring pulley, most brands this will just be plain old silver, but with Holland Cooper, it's antique bronze, which we love. Got a very subtle Holland Cooper crest down here, and I think 
down at the bottom, it actually has Holland Cooper embroidered down there. It's the kind of thing where if you live in a city, you might be thinking, Josie, you've gone a little bit bonkers. But if you live in the countryside and you go on dog walks, you get muddy, you get wet, then you will probably be thinking, actually, I know how useful a jacket like this is. So there we go. This is the new waterproof. I can't believe how snuggly this is. I feel like I'll probably just end up sitting inside by the fire wearing this because it's so soft. It feels like I'm wrapped up in a blanket. I actually really like how it looks. It's obviously completely oversized. I've got the smallest size that they do, but I really love how it looks. It does, of course, um, zip up. So if you are exposing yourself to the elements, I mean, this is perfect. April showers, come at me. They are not gonna get me wet if I'm wearing this. This is so perfect. <laughs> I absolutely love it. I always say this with Holland Cooper, um, but they just always think of all the design details you could possibly need. You can tell that the design team really go through a few iterations and testing to make sure that all the design details are spot on. For example, the fact that there's a little cap over the top of the zip here, because sometimes the zip can just like catch on your skin, but they've actually created a little cap for it here, which is perfect. The fact that the zip is a double zip, so if you need to climb over fences or styes when you're dog walking, you need to be able to open your legs a little bit wider. Um, then you can just open the zip from the bottom as well, you see? It opens up like so. And <laughs> the fact that the hood has got quite a big peak on it, because so often you'll be out and you'll put your hood up, but the rain still like sprays into your face, whereas this has got quite a big... <coughs> I'm realizing how ridiculous I look. It's got quite a big peak. So um, yeah, you're not gonna get any rain on you. It's fabulous and I love it. Okay, I've popped some things slightly less crazy on. This is a really lovely new piece of knitwear from Holland Cooper. I do love anything with a brown stripe in it. I think it's just really classic and timeless. I feel quite Parisian. I folded over the collar inwards i always find that that just looks a little bit better it's got a lovely pleated detail you can see here on the sleeves we've got the lovely button detail and it's just a really nice kind of warm milk chocolatey color brown a slight i don't know if you'd call this a bat wing not really a bat wing but it's got a loose relaxedness to the sleeve style and it's quite a light knit so as we go into spring um it's just a really nice lightweight knit once again tucked into the green trousers probably might have looked better with my brown ones but um we'll just use our imagination there yeah it's a really lovely lightweight knit feels very very <laughs> feels very comfortable, really soft, um, and yeah, just really timeless. So love this, really nice spring knit to add to the collection. Up next, another knit. I feel like their spring knitwear is just the best it's ever been. So this is another really nice lightweight one. It's got a bit more of a, a little bit more of a heaviness, but still lightweight. It's not, it's not thick like, um, you know these this iteration of knits which i think might have been last 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 autumn winter definitely i would say half the thickness of those zero itchiness to the fabric it's just not got those fibers in it which are itchy in the slightest i'm really liking this thin cable knit pattern um it's obviously not really a cable knit it's just a, well i don't know i don't know the definition is that a bicep or a tricep I don't know, but I've never seen my arm muscle look like that before, and I quite like it. This is, did you see in the last vlog, um, when you're on the reformer and you're doing like the pull with the strings, I swear that that is where this muscle has come from. Anyway, um, yeah, so we don't have a zip this time, obviously other than the neckline, it's very similar to the first one that I showed you, but it's still quite sporty and preppy with this collar detail. It's a really nice, just slim fitting knit. It's quite well fitted on the sleeves and then a little bit looser on the bodice. I've got it tucked in. I really like the relaxedness of this scoop. It's not too low. It's not gonna show cleavage or anything like that, but just a really nice like everyday bit of knitwear. 
and just feels like a really nice countryside outfit. If you're packing for a weekend in the Cotswolds, <laughs> this is all you need. Nice pair of boots, good pair of trousers that you can comfortably walk in, and just some elevated knitwear. Just look to Holland Cooper and <laughs> you'll be sorted. I do have a page on their website with all of the bits which are in my wardrobe, so I'll leave that link down below and just have a little look at that page. And it's basically all my favourite pieces. I have got one more piece of spring knitwear to share with you, so let's try that on. So this is the final piece of knitwear. I've actually not tucked this in. I think it looks quite nice, just like casually draped. And it is a really cute little preppy cardigan. It feels a little bit Ralph Lauren-esque. It's more of a chunky cable for the, what do you call it, texture of the fabric. The buttons are wooden, which gives it a little bit more of a casual feel. And you've got the HC logo here. Of course, we've got the buttons on the sleeve, but again, they are wooden, so a bit more cash. I think I saw this styled, maybe on their photo shoot, with a striped shirt underneath. So that would look really, really sweet. Again, with, um, with white jeans, with denim jeans, I think this could be a really nice bit to style. And then obviously when we get to actual summer, or like hot spring days, I really hope we have a hot summer this year, that would just make me so happy. Um, just wearing it undone, flung over the shoulders, over a little strappy dress. What a dream. Whereas right now I'm actually cold and I've got goosebumps and I'm probably going to go and sit downstairs by the Argo to do my emails. But there we go. New in from Holland Cooper, some really gorgeous, super duper wearable pieces. They are just having the best season right now. I love it. So many things which are so perfect for my personal wardrobe. Um, now, I think this vlog is probably getting quite long and um, I am going to have the most boring afternoon sat with the dogs, with my laptop, doing emails. So I'm actually going to end the vlog here, my darlings. Thank you so much for watching. If you got to the end, let's leave the word cable, as in cable knits, in your comments so I can see who watched all the way to the end. Um, and if you have got all the way to the end and you've not yet subscribed to the channel, have a little look down here. Can you see a subscribe button? If it doesn't say subscribed, <laughs> if it just says subscribe, please do hit the subscribe button and that way you won't miss any of my upcoming videos. And my darlings, that is it for today. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.